Many people in modern evangelical Christianity know Mark Driscoll for his powerful preaching, strong leadership, and impact on church groups. His ministry has made a big difference, especially in reaching younger people with lessons about marriage, being a man, and being involved in your community. However, there is a lot of controversy surrounding his reputation because of claims that he has done bad things. Concerning his leadership style, his religious beliefs, and the failure of Mars Hill Church, the organization he founded and oversaw for nearly two decades, Mark Driscoll was born in Grand Forks, North Dakota, on October 11, 1970. He grew up in a working-class Roman Catholic home and a traditional Christian home. Becoming an evangelical Christian changed his life. As a teenager, Driscoll learned about evangelical Christianity. This event would change his spiritual life forever. In his late teens, he went from being a Catholic child to a conservative Christian, which was a bigger and more active change in his faith. This conversion experience was very important because it made him love the Bible, theology, and ministry. It also helped him decide that he wanted to teach and bring other people to faith after he became a. His devotion to his faith drove Christian Driscoll to go to school. His goal was to get a degree in marketing from Washington State University. He chose to study speech as his major, which had a big impact on his future ministry. During college, Driscoll learned how to connect with people on a platform and in more casual settings. He also learned how to easily and convincingly explain ideas. After finishing college, Driscoll went to Oregon City, Portland, to study theology. This time was very important for his intellectual and emotional growth. Driscoll learned a lot about religion at Western Seminary, which is known for focusing on the Bibles in any and reform theory. The time he spent in seminary made his faith in God stronger. Mark Driscoll learned traditional Christian doctrine and how to read modern cultural issues through the lens of the Bible. This helped him start Mars Hill Church in Seattle, Washington, in 1996 and made him famous among evangelicals across the country. Mars Hill grew quickly under Driscoll's brave and active leadership. Through Driscoll's honest preaching and willingness to talk about tough topics, the small Bible study group he led grew into one of the largest and most important megachurches in the U.S. Some people loved him for being while others hated him for being. His theology shaped both his teaching and his leadership, making him a unique voice in evangelicalism. At first, it was just a small group of Christians trying to connect with Seattle's postmodern secular society. At the time, Seattle was known for having a lot of progressive non-religious people, and Driscoll liked the idea of the smaller group. Mars Hill was built from the start to be a church that would be relevant to people's lives and deal with their real-life problems while still staying true to the Bible. Driscoll wanted to start a church that would reach young people, especially those who didn't feel like they belonged in a church. Mars Hill's growth was truly amazing. By the early 2000s, the church had grown to include several schools in the Seattle area where thousands of people went every week. Driscoll's teaching, which was honest and straight to the point, was for people who were looking for a... Unlike many other megachurch pastors, Driscoll wasn't afraid to talk about tough topics like sexuality, marriage, gender roles, and cultural trends. He did this while staying true to reform theory, which was an important part of Mars Hill. Driscoll and his team were among the first to post sermons online, which let them reach people all over the world. Many people downloaded his lectures, and Mars Hill was one of the first churches to use digital media to reach people outside of its immediate area. A lot of people were moved by the church message, which mix. Using modern, culturally relevant language to talk about traditional Christian beliefs both inside and outside of the U.S. was a big part of Driscoll's success. His unique way of speaking was often called bold, unapologetic, and even confrontational. 
Driscoll wasn't afraid to talk about things that were controversial. He even went out of his way to find them. He talked freely about things like leadership. As a young adult, especially a guy who found traditional church settings too stiff or disconnected from their daily lives, he liked Driscoll's sermons because they were funny, made cultural references, and didn't waste time. One thing he talked about a lot was how important biblical manhood is in communities and churches, based on how he saw the Bible's lessons about gender roles many men felt left out by. Focusing on masculinity spoke to them because they saw a community that didn't value their role in society. But it was the same focus that led to criticism some said Driscoll was pushing and shut down opposition, even though there were problems. Driscoll's lectures were well-received. He was a well-known and sought-after speaker in the evangelical world because he could talk about cultural issues. Young Christians, especially those who lived in cities, flocked to Mars Hill because it was a place where biblical truth and modern relevance came together. Mark Driscoll helped start the Acts 29 Church Planning Network, a worldwide group whose goal is to start new churches. Driscoll wanted the word to spread by starting new churches, especially in cities. The idea behind Acts 29 came from places where traditional evangelical churches had trouble starting up. The network's goal was to teach and assist people who want to start new churches by giving them the religious and practical knowledge they need to do so in tough situations. Acts 29 quickly expanded and is now one of the most important groups for starting churches in the world by the early 2000s. Mark Driscoll is a famous evangelical preacher and speaker, and he also writes a lot. In the 2010s, the network helped start hundreds of churches around the world, mostly in big cities where Christianity faces the biggest cultural problems. The way Driscoll led in Act 29 made his reputation as a visionary leader in evangelicalism even stronger, especially when it comes to planting new churches. He has written many books over the years, and many of them have had a big impact on religious fundamentalists and Christians in general. Like his lectures, his books are directly theologically deep and relevant to today's culture. His most recent book, Confessions of a Reformation, came out in 2006 and is an inside look at how Mars Hill Church began and how it has grown. In this autobiography, Driscoll is honest about the good and bad things that happened to him. He is the leader of the church, and the book has both personal stories and leadership guides. The leadership guides explain how Mars Hill went from being a small Bible study group to one of the largest and most important megachurches in the U.S. Driscoll writes directly to pastors and church leaders in the book planners to give them advice on how to run a church in a postmodern, secular world. He talks about preaching, developing leaders, and how important it is for the church's culture to be both true to the Bible and relevant to today's society. A lot of young ministers who wanted to keep their religious beliefs but connect with their communities liked Confessions of A. Grace Driscoll Co. wrote a book called Reformation Reverend Real Marriage, The Truth About Sex, Friendship, and Life Together. The book talks about the problems that couples face and gives biblical advice on how to talk to each other, get closer, and solve problems. Real Marriage was different from other Christian marriage books because it was honest about real marriage on the other hand. It wasn't always easy. Some people didn't agree with Driscoll's ideas about gender roles and how he talked about sex. Despite these issues, the book still had a lot of readers, especially evangelical couples who wanted a practical, biblically-based guide to navigating the complicated world of marriage. Driscoll and a theology professor named Dr. Jerry Burrs wrote Doctrine, What Christians Should Believe. This book gives a broad review of important Christian beliefs in an easy-to-understand and interesting way, making it a systematic. Theology for people who aren't theologians Driscoll and Brushers talk about important religious topics like the Trinity, 
the beginning of the world, sin, salvation, and the end of the world. They do this by giving people a short and clear explanation of what the Bible says Christians should believe. The book's popularity was helped by the fact that it was used as part of a lecture series at Mars Hill Church and in small group studies. Many Christians who read the book people on Mars Hill who wanted to learn more about their faith looked to doctrine for help. Its influence spread to other churches and ministries across the People all over the country read Driscoll's books and went to his lectures. This was especially true for young men and families. His writings dealt with many of the problems that young people face, such as marriage, leadership, and theological confusion. They also gave clear biblical advice to young men who were looking for a Christian point of view. For example, Driscoll wrote about being a man, a leader, and how important strong. One thing that made Driscoll so popular was his ability to combine a deep understanding of religion with the needs of modern people. His books weren't just theoretical, they were also very useful. They dealt with real-life problems in a way that many readers liked. Driscoll's focus on biblical parenting and teaching is good for young families. It helps people figure out how to raise a Christian family in a world that is changing. In 2014, Mark Driscoll's career took a big and public hit when Mars Hill, the church he co-founded and led for almost 20 years, shut down because of problems inside and outside the church. There were accusations of wrongdoing, including authoritarian leadership, bullying, mismanagement of funds, and plagiarism, which shook the megachurch to its core and led to Driscoll's resignation. Driscoll's career hit a low point when he quit Mars Hill, and his once thriving ministry was kicked out of the Acts 29 church building network. Many people liked Driscoll's bold and confrontational style of teaching, but it also got him a lot of criticism especially for how he felt about gender roles, masculinity, and church leadership. His strong personality, which had helped the church grow at first, became a source of controversy when former church members, workers, volunteers, and members said he was mean to them and took advantage of their spirituality. Some said Driscoll was an authoritarian boss who didn't let people disagree with him. Reports say he didn't like it when people didn't agree with him, and that he often ruled the church with a hard fist, making the staff afraid. Some former employees said Driscoll put down and insulted people who didn't agree with him, which made the workplace unsafe for those who didn't agree. They were also pushed out of top positions. One of the most upsetting things about the claims was that people questioned his power. Other former members said that the church's punishment system was too harsh and more about keeping order than getting people to change and get along with others. Many people at Mars Hill and beyond lost their jobs. There were calls for Driscoll to step down because of people's lack of faith in him. He was also closely watched for how he managed the money at Mars Hill Church and was accused of spiritual abuse. One of the worst claims was that church funds were misused, especially in how Mars Hill spent money on different projects. There was a scene that caused a lot of controversy. His wife, Grace Driscoll, wrote the book Real Marriage, and it was wrong for the church to pay for ads for it. It turned out that Mars Hill had paid a marketing company to buy thousands of copies of Real Marriage in bulk to make sure it would make the New York Times bestseller list. A lot of people thought this was called gaming. People started to doubt Driscoll's honesty and how he used church resources to help himself. In 2013, Driscoll's reputation took another hit when he was accused of plagiarism. It was found that parts of his books, like Doctrine, What Christians Should Believe, were copied from other sources. Not only did this find make people doubt Driscoll's research, it also made them doubt his character and how honest he is. Even though Driscoll and his publishing team played down the problem at first, the plagiarism claims made people think. As the accusations against Driscoll grew, 
Marcel Church's elder board began an internal review into what he did. The pressure got to be too much for him. So in August 2014, he told everyone that he would be taking a short break while the investigation went on. However, things kept getting worse as more former staff members and members of the congregation came forward with claims of abuse, bad handling of funds, and unethical leadership. Marcel Church also has problems with its own people. His problems also hurt his reputation in the evangelical world as a whole. In 2014, Driscoll was fired from his position as leader of the Acts 29 Church Building Network, which he had helped to start in 2000. Chapter 29 leaders said they could no longer support Driscoll in his job as a church planner. Some pastors didn't trust him as a leader, and the way he handled the problems at Mars Hill was very upsetting to Driscoll personally. It hurt him at work, in his mind, and in his spirit as claims of bullying, dictatorial leadership, and bad money management spread. The news media and the evangelical community as a whole were very critical of Driscoll. Mars Hill's fall had terrible effects, including the loss of community, the destruction of the church he had built, and damage to his public image. This fall was especially hard for a man who had been a famous figure in the religious world. In late 2014, Driscoll's family moved to Phoenix, Arizona. This was a new start for them. During their last few years in Seattle, Driscoll's family and his mission were able to get away from the problems that had been bothering them. Driscoll was able to step away from the attention and think about his duties as a preacher, husband, and father. Before going back to public preaching, he took some time to focus on his family and rebuild his spiritual life. Driscoll was mostly quiet. He stayed away from big public events and the national stage for about two years while he was in Phoenix. This gave him time to think about the future of his ministry and leadership. During this time of healing and self-reflection, Driscoll felt called to go back to ministry but this time he wanted to start churches more than before. This is why he started the Trinity Church, a brand new group of people in. Scottsdale, Arizona, Driscoll started the Trinity Church in 2016 with the goal of making a church that would reflect what he had learned at Mars Hill. As Driscoll began to speak again, the crowd kept growing. Driscoll wanted to start over by starting the Trinity Church. He still wanted to teach the Bible and be involved in culture, but he didn't want to dwell on the problems in his past. Driscoll led with more modesty and restraint at Trinity Church, where he talked about grace, forgiveness, and family. He said he was sorry for the mistakes he had made in the past and wanted to be a better leader by caring more and being more willing to help others. Driscoll has been very open about what he learned from Mars Hills, especially about how important it is to be humble, even when you're successful. Even though Driscoll is still a bold preacher, he has focused more on his own spiritual growth and the health of the Trinity Church group. Trinity Church has slowly grown, attracting families, young professionals, and new believers. Driscoll has kept writing books, preaching, and dealing with cultural problems from a biblical point of view even though his ministry isn't as well known. Evangelicals still look to Driscoll as a major figure, especially when it comes to church and family service. His new church in Scottsdale focuses on building a strong sense of community and reaching out to people in the area. They want to make a difference. The Trinity Church has put a lot of emphasis on teaching family values and supporting its members. They want to make the church a safe place where people can grow in their faith. This is different from Driscoll's work at Mars Hill, where he was often angry and confrontational. Driscoll is still a. There are still loyal followers of him, especially at Trinity Church, where his community has grown. But he also gets constant criticism from people who don't trust his leadership because they don't know how much he has changed and if he has fully dealt with the problems. 
since he was ready to go back to ministry so soon after the Mars Hill scandal. Others, on the other hand, see Driscoll's strength as proof of God's forgiveness and grace, and they believe that his past mistakes don't stop him from continuing to minister, teach, and lead. A lot of people still read and listen to his books and sermons, especially young Christians who want to know more about faith, family, and culture issues. He has worked hard at Trinity Church to make it a place where people value teaching and spiritual growth, with a focus on healing from past hurt and making families stronger. So this is his story. Mark Driscoll's life is full of ups and downs of success and failure, of turning away from sin and rising above it. His journey shows how hard it is for charismatic leaders to deal with the complicated issues of spiritual power, accountability, and church leadership. There's no doubt that Mars Hill Church will always have problems. Be linked to his name Driscoll's ministry shows that people can change and be forgiven even if they do something wrong in public.